In this video, I will examine the discovery that changes the view of early Christianity around the world, the Nag Hammadi Library. Please like this video and subscribe. It is free and will go a long way to help me grow this channel. Thank you. Without further ado, let's get started. Until the discovery of the Nag Hammadi Library in 1945, the Gnostic view of early Christianity had largely been forgotten. But when two peasants discovered a 13-volume library of Coptic texts hidden beneath a large border near the town of Nag Hammadi in Upper Egypt, the world was reintroduced to this long-forgotten and much maligned branch of early Christianity. The Nag Hammadi Library or Gnostic Gospels is a collection of early Christian and Gnostic texts discovered near the Upper Egyptian town of Nag Hammadi in 1945. Dating leather bound papyrus codices buried in a sealed jar were found by a local farmer named Mohammed al Samar. The writings in these codices comprise of 52 mostly Gnostic treatises, but they also include three works belonging to the Corpus Hermeticum and a partial translation or alteration of Plato's Republic. In his introduction to the Nag Hammadi Library in English, James Robinson suggests that these codices may have belonged to a nearby Pacomian monastery and were buried after Saint Athanasius condemned the use of noon canonical books in his festal letter of 367 AD. The discovery of this text significantly inflames modern scholarship's pursuit and knowledge of early Christianity and Gnosticism. The contents of the codices were written in the Coptic language. The best known of these works is probably the Gospel of Thomas, of which the Nag Hammadi codices contain the early complete text. After the discovery, scholars recognized that fragments of these saints attributed to Jesus appeared in manuscript discovered at Osirinkos in 1898, and matching quotations were recognized in other early Christian sources. The written text of the Gospel of Thomas is dated to the 2nd century by most interpreters. But based on much earlier sources, the buried manuscripts date from the 3rd to the 4th centuries. The Nag Hammadi codices are currently housed in the Coptic Museum in Cairo in Egypt. Scholars first became aware of the Nag Hammadi Library in 1946. Making careful inquiries from 1947 to 1950, Jane Doris discovered that the Pisan dug up the text from a graveyard in the desert located near tombs from the 6th dynasty of Egypt. In the 1970s, James Robinson sought out the Pisan in question, identifying him as Muhammad Ali al Saman. Al Saman told Robinson a complex story involving a blood feud cannibalism, digging for fresh soil for agricultural use, and superstition about the gene. His mother claimed that she burned some of the manuscripts. Robinson identified this with Codes 7. Robinson gave multiple accounts of this interview with the number of people present at the discovery ranging from 2 to 8. Jane Doris's account contains none of these elements. Later scholars have drawn attention to Al Saman's mention of the corpse and a bed of charcoal at the site, aspects of the story that were vehemently denied by Al Saman's brother. It is suggested that the library was initially a simple grave robbing, and the more fanciful aspects of the story were concocted as a cover up. Burials of books were common in Egypt in the early centuries AD. But if the library was a funerary deposit of conflict with Robinson's belief that the manuscripts were purposely hidden out of fear of persecution. The blood feud, however, is well attested by multiple sources. But slowly, most of the tracts came into the hands of Fokion J. Tenos, a Capriot antiques dealer in Cairo. Thereafter, being retained by the Department of Antiquities for fear that they would be sold out of the country. After the revolution in 1952, these tests were handed to the Coptic Museum in Cairo and declared a national property. 
Paho Labib, the director of the Coptic Museum at that time, was keen to keep this manuscript in their country of origin. Meanwhile, a single codex had been sold in Cairo to a Belgian antique dealer. After an attempt was made to sell the codex in both New York City and Paris, it was acquired by the Carl Gustav Jung Institute in Zurich in 1951 through the mediation of Gilles Quispel. Jung's death in 1961 resulted in a quarrel over the ownership of the Jung Codex. The pages were not given to the Coptic Museum in Cairo. Until 1975, after a first edition of the text had been published, the papyri were finally brought together in Cairo. And of the 1945 find, 11 complete books and fragments of two others amounting to well over 1,000 written pages are preserved there. Although the manuscript discovered at Nag Hammadi are generally dated to the 4th century, there is some debate regarding the original composition of the text. For example, the Gospel of Thomas is held by most to be the earliest of the Gnostic Gospels ever composed. Scholars generally date the text to the early mid-2nd century. It is often claimed that the Gospel of Thomas has some Gnostic elements but lacks the full Gnostic cosmology. However, even the description of this element as Gnostic is based mainly upon the presupposition that the text as a whole is a Gnostic gospel, and this idea itself is based upon little other than the fact that it was found along with Gnostic texts at Nag Hammadi. Some scholars, including Nicholas Pirin, argued that Thomas is dependent on Diatessarion, which was composed shortly after 172 by Tetian in Syria. Others contend for an earlier date, with the minority claiming a date of perhaps 50 AD and citing a relationship to the hypothetical Q document, among other reasons. Secondly, the Gospel of Truth and the teachings of the PST Sophia can be approximately dated to the early 2nd century, as they were part of the original Valentinian school of Toph though the gospel itself is third century. Thirdly, documents with the Sechian influence like the Gospel of Judas or outright Sechian like Coptic Gospel of the Egyptians can be dated substantially later than 40 and substantially earlier than 250. Most scholars give them a second century date. Most conservative scholars using the traditional dating method would argue for the early 3rd century. Some Gnostic gospels such as Triomorphic Protenua make use of the fully developed Neoplatonism and thus need to be dated after Plotinus in the 10th century. Please like this video and share with friends and family on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and enable notification for more insightful videos. Thank you very much for watching.